So far in this tutorial, we've been focusing on inputting notes by using only your computer. There's an advantage to this, because with every step we've learned more about the way the program operates. But now I think we're ready to try out a MIDI interface. Even though I often compose and arrange music by just using the mouse and the computer keys, especially when I'm traveling, I have to admit that MIDI is the fastest way of all. But it takes a very steady hand, and a precise sense of rhythm, especially when you're recording a line of music that other musicians are going to want to read. First things first. Connect the USB cable from your MIDI device into the USB port on your computer. Then click the Note Input tab on the ribbon and select Input Devices on the far left. This opens your Preferences menu to the Input Devices category. The button we want is the Find New Input Devices right here. Click that button, and if all of your connections are good and your device is on, then you should see it appear on the list up here. Now test the device by playing a note once or twice. The green light should get excited in this text box over here, and you should hear a note playing. If that's all working, then click OK at the bottom of the menu. Your device is now set up. Now, making sure that everything in your score is still deselected, noodle around a little bit with your MIDI device. If you've still got the keyboard panel open from the last video, notice how the keys are responding to your playing, just like a player piano. If you have a MIDI device that's not a keyboard, this may be useful to you in understanding where pitches are as you input. Or you could just turn it off. Let's do that now. Now let's start by practicing the chorus to green sleeves. Make sure that hard copy is propped up where you can read it, and play it through a few times. As you play, really try to play exactly in time, without dragging or speeding up. Once you feel comfortable with the notes, let's try recording ourselves. Sibelius has a function called FlexiTime, which tracks your natural playing style and adjusts itself to allow for minute changes of rhythm. Even so, I've found that for best results, you really have to play precisely, and even then there will be some touch-up editing to do. Time for some key commands. First, open the Transport panel with Option-Command-Y or Alt-Control-Y. Move your mouse pointer to this last button, the metronome, and make sure that it's clicked on. Now type the letter M. This opens the mixer panel. Select the slider over here that reads click and drag it as high as it can go. Perfect. Now type M again to close the mixer. You're now ready to record. Select the first empty bar of the chorus with a mouse click. Get ready to click this button here. When you do, what you'll hear is a six beat count in. Then start playing the notes. Here goes nothing. If you were extremely careful to follow the beat, then you should have some input that looks like this. Most of the rhythms entered correctly, with a few notes that are too short because you lifted your finger early. That's easily corrected by selecting the note in question and clicking the right rhythm in the keypad. But you also might end up with input that looks like this. That's the trade-off for working this fast. You have to really, really be accurate in your playing to end up with the least amount of editing. That's why, even though I'm a very busy composer with very little time to waste, I still find it faster and more natural to enter pitches using my MIDI keyboard, but enter the rhythms one at a time on the keypad. There's less pressure, and I can think ahead about the next bar as I work. I don't have to focus so narrowly on one bar or phrase just to get it exactly right. Look, don't worry if your score looks like a dog's breakfast. We're going to clean everything up in our next video and get things ready for lyrics and chord symbols.